Jacob Goebel. Hey, buddy. How you doing, man? Good, man. How are you? Doing good, dude. Doing good. It is a pleasure to finally get you here in the studio. It's been crazy yeah, here lately, but I'm happy that we finally made this happen, I, man. I appreciate the invite, for sure. Yeah, dude, no doubt. Like, like I was uh, telling you here before we hopped on air, I made a little status at the beginning of this year trying to get some help from my fellow Facebookians about <laughs> somebody to talk to about you know health and fitness and getting in shape because so many people have that mindset whenever a new year comes, yeah. new me. Yep. So I put out that status and quite a few people commented your name. So it seems like you know what you're talking about. I man. know a little. We're, we're at, you'd be surprised. Man, there's actually a lot of people in this area that uh, have a wealth of knowledge. Um, and I can mention some of those, you know, yeah. Cor- Corey Hayes, Tracy Jones, Don Fields, um, Randy Burris. Some of those guys are the guys that when I was young that I looked up to, mm-hmm. you know, a couple of those guys. But, yeah, we have we have a lot of people in this area, to be quite honest with you. Um, it's just for whatever reason, people either – they don't reach out to them, or it's probably actually that's probably the biggest thing. They just don't reach out to them. Yeah, because those I, guys have a wealth of knowledge. Wealth. I, of knowledge. I would say that a lot of people are just kind of nervous, or you know, maybe even ashamed. Like some people think that like that they don't want to go to a gym and be surrounded by people that are already you know perfect. <laughs> but <laughs> it, but and we were also talking about at the beginning of this, you know, like the the gentle giants. Yeah. How. So many people in this community are so helpful and non-judgmental. So oh, for yeah. anybody who thinks that I don't want to go to a gym because you know people are going to make fun of me or whatever is going on inside mm-hmm. their head, that's not the case at all. From every post that I've seen of yours about the gym, people always comment about how supportive everybody is, yeah, how absolutely. helpful everybody is. Yeah. And for the most part, from what I've seen, that really is the community whenever it comes to health and fitness people inside this area. That's exactly right. I mean, the gym atmosphere is built by the members, just like the community is built by the citizens of the community. Yeah. You know, like we're very, we're blessed to have the people that we have. I mean, I have to say, and we have great members and we do is we are supportive of one another. We push each other and we hold each other accountable but we're very supportive. Yeah. Um, and we all have, not everyone that comes into the gym is going to be an aspiring bodybuilder or an aspiring power lifter or an aspiring strong man. Yeah. They're just not. Some people, most people, they just come to the gym because they just want to feel better about themselves, get in better shape, get healthy. You know, mm-hmm. that that's what brings most people to the gym. But some people, they want to take it a little further. You know, yeah. and they want to compete. They want to be a competitive athlete in some some form, whatever it may be, CrossFit, whatever. There's all kinds of different forms of fitness out there. Um, some people choose one over the other or two over the other, whatever, and that's fine. I mean, you know, everyone has their, their niche, per se, yeah. something that they, they like, they're involved in. Um, and it, it can be, there's a, you know, there's just a wide range of stuff in the fitness industry, biking. You know, look at yeah, Don that's Fields because, again. That's a really big well, look thing. at Don. I mean, Don really. You know, I, I should have called Don, let him know I was going to talk about him this much. I didn't mean to, but uh, I'm going to tell you, Don's like one of the guys. Really, he put fitness on the map in Eastern Kentucky in this area. I don't. People do not give that man enough credit. Well, so how how long has he been? Gosh, doing Don it for? Fields has been doing this since the '80s, man. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So is he just a big he's biker? Just, he's or? a biker now, but he's done it all. You know, he does a yeah. lot of – he loves road biking, and, and he just does. I don't want to speak for him, of course. I didn't even get a hold – didn't even tell him. I didn't really mean to talk that much about him, but he's just a huge inspiration to me. When I was coming up, young kid, yeah. you know, in high school, and he was the guy, really. He was one of the guys, you know, and he's just got a wealth of knowledge. I mean – so where did all this start for you, though, man? How did in you get school. so involved in fitness? In high school. Um, me and some of my buddies, just like you know, like some of these young guys are doing now, mm-hmm. um, we had a little gym in Prestonsburg that was tiny. I mean, we had a tiny little gym with, I hate to say it, ratty equipment. I mean, it was yeah. most of it was homemade. It was called Top Dog. And uh, actually, the owner of that gym was John Rodney McKinney, who actually owns the Richmond Athletic Club, which is a very nice gym. Dude's got a great Richmond. name. Yeah. Great name. JR, yeah. Yeah. But uh, he owned the gym at like 24. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no joke. I think he was about 24. I was like 15 or something <laughs> like that, 16. But uh, yeah, I mean, we all just kind of 
just started working out and everybody had the magazines. Everybody wanted to be Arnold, of course. Yeah. You know, that yeah. was a thing, right? So that's kind of how it started for me. And I just, it just, it just progressed. It got to where, of course, I wanted to know more. I wanted to educate myself. I got in the military and, you know, went off and did my thing. And that was, that's always been a constant in my life has always been the gym, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you, I'm sure you probably talked to other combat vets. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm a combat veteran, retired. Um, honestly, man, and I, I don't. This is gonna get a little deep, but the gym probably saved my life. It does do a lot for people's mental yeah, health, man. It probably saved my life, man. No joke, because you know, every time I go overseas and come back, the only thing for me, I can only speak for myself. The only thing that was like hadn't changed it seemed like everything around me had changed i had changed everything around me had changed but the one thing that was always the same mm-hmm. was the gym mm. it never changed so it kind of kept me grounded i wonder what it is that you know keeps that is it does it release certain endorphins of course, in the brain of course you know when you're training uh, and another form of activity you we release serotonin the happy hormone and yeah. that comes from intense training Hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it makes sense. Uh, yeah. Whenever um, I don't, you know, go for a run or get my work in you for, for a while, dude, I get in this mental fog yeah. where I can't even yeah. think straight. Yeah. It, it does wonders for you're, people if you're su- if you're suffering depression yeah. or any form of mental illness. Serotonin, buddy. You know, like the gym can do absolute wonders. It, it doesn't have to really do. Uh, it helps with the confidence, of course. of course, but it can do so many other things and, and two uh you know it's i don't want to i don't <laughs> it's not really a social gathering but in a sense it's a social gathering because you're in there with all your buddies or people some people you may have never known before but you meet them in the gym and now you're buddies yeah you know you may have nothing else in common but you have one thing in common and that's the gym yeah you're also around people who are Pushing themselves, themselves to be better. The same type of mentality. Exactly. It's the same That's mentality. one thing that uh, me and Alex were talking about earlier. I, I use this saying over and over again. I'm sure people are tired of it, but you know it's true. If you stand next to fire, you're going to get burned. Absolutely. It's all about the type of environment that you put yourself in, the type of people you surround yourself in Absolutely. within that environment. And a gym is one of the best places. Yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. So, so, so uh, your gym, for the people that don't know much mm-hmm. about it, what is it? East Kentucky Barbell. Great name, by the way. Yeah, I like it. I'm a fan. <laughs> so how long have you been doing the gym for? Uh, about a year now. Cool, yeah. man. Yeah, we started out with supplement shops and stuff like that, which uh, you know, I've, been, I've dabbled in stuff like that for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just kind of... It just kind of happened, to be honest with you. I mean, it just kind of it just kind of happened. Um, you know, I've I've got I got a lot of background in fitness. You know, I'm an all army fitness instructor. I went to the the army also sent me to that Nike Fit Academy in in Colorado Springs, and mm-hmm. I've trained professional athletes like that in that setting. Um, so you know, I've, I've I've had a lot of and I competed too. Um, yeah. Been around a lot of people with a lot of knowledge, like Don. Jamie Kidd. There's a lot. We've got a lot of people. Like I said, there's a lot of people in this area. There's not not a lot of people. And two, I think the reason why is because it's just not. It's mainstream, but it's not so mainstream here. Mm-hmm. You know, like you get away from here, you go not 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 don't mean anything negative. It's just like you go to Lexington and you know gym on every corner. There's a gym yeah. on every corner. You know, and everybody seems like they are doing their Facebook selfies. They're at the gym. You know, yeah. That's just that, or that's just what they're doing here. It's not quite. It's just not quite like that. Um, not saying that it, it will never get there. I hope it does, but it's just it's the the I don't want to say this. Um, the lifestyle is just a little different, mm-hmm. I guess. You yeah, know? I know what you're saying. It's just a little different. Um, like when I was you know away from here in the army, I mean everybody went to the gym. I mean it was like that's just what you did. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean there was no you know you go eat and you go to the gym and then you go eat again. Yeah, that's just what you do. I, I think a lot of that back in the day too, man, was you know pop culture. Yes, I, I was I was a huge wrestling fan back oh, in the yeah. day, and Me I wa- too. I was watching this uh, Dark Side of the Ring episode yesterday, and uh, you know they were talking about 
the, the times that you were talking about, you know, like Arnold back in the day whenever oh, he yeah. was bodybuilding. But you also had professional wrestling was the biggest thing on the planet at the time. Oh, yeah. And you had Hulk Hogan, the yep. ultimate warrior. These dudes that were... Sting. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, and they looked like this, yep. just a, a brick house. Yep. And, I mean, if that's what you're seeing on TV every day, if that's what you're being surrounded by, that's what everybody is going to Achieving. be like. You want to achieve that status. I'm trying to think of, like, the last guy that kind of like would have influenced dudes to be that way i guess probably like brad pitt and fight club that was like like one of the last dudes that like other guys were watching the movies like that's how i want to look yeah there's there's probably still several really um it's just and you know fitness in general we can go on that if you want to how how like the let's say the bodybuilding community we we can talk about that for a second it's evolved Look how it's evolved since the days of Arnold. Look at the physique Arnold had, and you compare that physique to these mass monsters today. Yeah, it's you crazy, know, it's man. it's a crazy transformation that's taken place from you know bodybuilding has. They say it's evolved. Some people disagree. Some people say that that this new look is a little too much, and I, I think so too. But I, I mean, some people some people like it, and that's fine. <laughs> you know, that's fine. That's what just goes back to you know. Different types of training. People like different types of training. You know, I like the more classic, you know, physique like Arnold. I think that's more appealing look. It's it's more yeah. and it's more achievable too. You know, honestly. Um, well, I was going to ask. Do you think that everybody can be that way? Because so many folks will say like, "Oh, he's well, just got great superior, genetics." Superior or, genetics. Now, I don't, I'm not going to say that anyone can look like Arnold because that's just simply not true. Yeah. You know, it's just simply it's not true. Um, Arnold was one of the very few individuals who had superior genetics. I mean, yeah. it's just – there's two things that you will never be able to out-train. Do you want to know what those two things are? What's that? Bad genetics and a bad diet. Mm, I like You that. can do whatever you want to do. You can run a marathon. You can come to the gym seven days a week and train for an hour to three hours. makes no difference. Yeah. If you leave the gym and you go to McDonald's and you get a big and nasty – you're going to look like that McDonald's big and nasty. Yes, you are. That's just the way it is. I, I try to tell folks that all the time. They'll get through with the workout, and then they say, yep. I'm going to treat myself. Yeah, I can't tell you, you just, how many times yeah, I've heard that. Like, you no, just, this, you can't. You no, that's not you how just it works. Wasted, you just wasted all that effort, all that work in the gym. Yes. You just wasted every bit of that Yeah, for not. And genetics plays a big role. You Diet can really – you can really can change your physique just with some resistance training and good smart training. You know, mm. and a good and a good diet. Yeah. You know, a good balanced diet. You can do a lot. You can, you really can. You know, but yeah. then you got these guys like Arnold. You know, and new guys like Colin Ben Moger, some of these other guys who just have they just have superior genetics. Yeah. They just do. You know. Yes, yeah, some people are blessed that way. Yeah. Me and you were talking right before we hopped on air. You know, that whenever it comes to a diet, so many people that I talk to nowadays, and even I feel this way sometimes, especially with how the price of just everything oh, gosh, went yeah. through the roof. A lot of people will say that, oh, I can't afford to eat healthy. I can't afford a good diet. Are there ways there, around there that? are There are some ways to get around it, of course. Unfortunately, right now with the way meat, the prices of meat's been going up. You yeah. know, typically, you know, it wasn't like it. You know, six months ago, it wasn't like it is now. We all know that. That That's kind of one of those things that's kind of hard to get around because you have to have protein in your diet. Yeah. You know, a good rule of thumb, you know, is one gram of body of, of protein per body pound to maintain normal muscle density to grow? Mm -hmm. It's one point, you know, it's like one point five to two. Two, you kind of flirting with getting some protein in your urine and things like that. But you know, typically a good rule of thumb is one gram, you know, at mm -hmm. least. Um, so if you weigh two hundred pounds, it's two hundred grams a day. Um, but when, I, from, when we're talking about food sources for protein, I mean, it's everything needs to be grilled or baked. Don't fry it. You know, yeah. that's you're getting the nasty oils when you fry it. You know, you don't want that in your diet. You need to grill it or you need to bake it. You know, we can put it in a mm. crock pot kind of thing, too. I do that sometimes. But basically, proteins is really simple. It's turkey, fish, red meat, beef, hamburger, things like that. Mm -hmm. Chicken. I mean, it's pretty pretty simple. Yeah. You know, it's it's not... It's not sexy. It's just not sexy. It's just, it's boring. <laughs> hey, it ain't know? on a burger. It ain't on <laughs> yeah. buns with it's, lettuce it's, and yeah, all that. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's bland. You can use, there's some things you can do, some like 
no sugar, uh, barbecue sauces and things like that from G. Higgins. There's things you can use to help. But, yeah, if you really want to get really serious about it. But now, like your your carb sources, um, rice, of course, jasmine, brown rice, white rice, makes no difference. Potatoes, I like sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes have a natural thermogenic effect to them, so you can use sweet potatoes. Don't use no butter, of course. Use a little bit of, of uh, cinnamon. Cinnamon is another natural thermogenic, so it helps boost your metabolic rate. What is a thermogenic? It's a boost your metabolic rate, your, 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 your uh, metabolism, so you can burn, your body will burn body fat. Okay. Yeah, kind cool. of speeds that process up. Um, you know, but sweet potatoes are good. Uh, oats, another great source. Cream of rice, things like that. Uh, you want to stay away from the fatty cakes. Anything that's processed, you know, saturated sugars, all that kind of stuff. You don't want to eat that kind of stuff. You know, for your good clean fats, it can be MCT oils. Um, avocado is great. Almonds, raw almonds, not this stuff that's salted and you know, all this kind of stuff. No, yeah. you know, raw almonds and and. Um, Black walnuts and just things like that. You yeah. know, that's a good, clean fat source. You know, that's that's the kind of stuff you need in your diet. You, of course, you can have some pastas. You got to be really careful with some of the pastas that you eat. But yeah, you can you can do that. And there's nothing wrong with with once you get on a good, clean diet and you're eating right. Reward yourself. I'm not saying go to McDonald's and don't go to the buffet and do all this kind of stuff. But you know, have have a good meal. You know, or even one day where you kind of. Slack a little bit and, and, you know, reward yourself a little. There's nothing wrong with that. Me and my wife, we went to uh, McDonald's a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And, dude, it was almost 20 bucks for the, for the people saying nowadays that they can't afford to eat healthy. Yeah, that's not you, the case now. Yeah, well, if you start, like, looking at the price that you're spending on, you know, this, this fast food yep. or whatever it is, yep. you would be paying just about the same mm-hmm. as if you were to really yep. do your research and find these natural foods that are good for you. Yeah, whole foods, good whole foods. Yeah. You know, and you can meal prep and make an – I don't – I meal prep too, right? Me and my wife both do. But the thing with meal prepping is, like, I – Nobody wants to eat chicken that's five days old. And I get it. I don't want to do it either. I was going to ask, yeah. like, is that even safe? Well, yeah, it is. If it's in the fridge, kept in the fridge, yeah, I've, I've okay. done it, yes, lots of times. But here's how I prefer to do it. It's, it is a little more – it does take a little more time. But what I've found is more successful, not just for me but for other people too, um, like cook on Sunday night for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Cook on Wednesday night for Thursday, Friday. Saturday or Thursday and Friday. Saturday you're going to be home. You can cook your meals fresh. Mm. You know what you know what I'm saying. Yeah, that makes that sense. way you're not you don't have four day old or five day old chicken because it's like rubbery, right? Yeah. We all know that that people have done that. We know that and we hate that. So that's one way you can kind of alleviate that little bit. But at the end of the day, meal prepping honestly, if you're going to be successful with a real good diet, and that, then that's what you're wanting to do. Really, the only way to do it is prepping. You're not gonna, you're just not going to, because it's going to be too easy to yeah. go through that drive-through. It's going to be too easy to go to the gas station and pick up something that you don't need. Because if you have your food on you and it's already cooked, it's already ready to go. I could just throw it in the microwave and cook it. You're going to eat it. Nine yeah. times out of ten, you're going to eat it. You know, but if you don't have it, you know, mm. and you got to cook it, and you're hungry. You may just decide to stop someplace else and eat. Yeah, man. You there, know? Th- there's an answer for every excuse that somebody has out there. And that and that's another one. It's like, I just don't have the time. Like you said, take one day a week to yep. just go ahead and yep. get it all over with. Yeah, you can do that. I, I, take, I take two. I'll take Sunday evening and Wednesday evening. And it takes me to, to prep for those. It takes me about an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. It's not that long. That's not bad at no. all. And I'll weigh everything out on the food scale. I'll either bake or grill all my protein sources, potatoes, cut them up in chunks, boil a bunch of rice in a rice cooker, you know, cut up a bunch of potatoes, throw them in the oven, bake them, you know, get them out, weigh everything, put it in my trays, meal one, put it on there, meal two, circle it, meal three, circle it. (laughs) I'm getting hungry doing this podcast. That's (laughs) that's how I do it, and that's how most people do it. But, you know, there's there's other ways to do it. I'm I'm not saying that that's the only way to do it, because it's not. I'm sure there's people that's found better ways to do it, but that's what worked for me. Yeah. You know, that's all I can say. That's how I've found that works best for me. But I'm sure there's other people out there that have, you know, done it other ways and it worked for them and great. How how do you keep, you know, how, how do you keep at it? How do you keep your mind good? Because it's very easy for people to slip back into these it old is. habits. Oh, gosh, yeah. Um, you know, that's a good question. I, I guess just 
out of two things, probably. If I had to answer, the only thing I could really honestly say is, one, it's habit mm-hmm. is the biggest thing. It's become an actual habit for me because I've done it for so many years. And I don't know where, any other way to do it. Yeah. Um, and two, it's just it's my lifestyle now. It has been for a long time. Um, so to me, it's the norm. Mm. You know, like, how, how long do you think that it took you to make it the norm? To where, like, just one day you didn't think about I'd it. Say, it just, I'd were... say it was probably a year or so. Hmm. It probably was. Um, I've had breaks, of course, you know, being deployed for a year at a time or whatever and just eating whenever I could eat, whatever I could get my hands on. Yeah. You know, and, I, you know, so I, ha- I, you know, in theory, I've had breaks, several of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when I would get back, I'd come back home and then I'd get back on track. Okay. You know, so I've it's not like I've continually I have had breaks, you know. Yeah. Uncle Sam made sure I was good to go, so you yeah. know, I didn't get too too tired. <laughs> Me, man, it's just you know, I, I got some buddies that are you know, health nuts and stuff yep. like that. But really but some people aren't that lucky. And I, I I'm not surrounded by those people on a daily basis. So what I'll do is I found podcasts to help quite a bit, mm-hmm. like uh, you know Jocko Willink. God, love yeah. Jocko. I love Jocko. I, I'll either listen to his podcast or any podcast He'll make you want to that has David stuff. Goggins on it. David's a da- dude. He's David a different gets animal. Me <laughs> he's a different animal. I will. He <laughs> makes me feel like such a little, <laughs> yeah. you know. Cause, yeah. Cause like the other day, I was listening to him, and and I was thinking to myself like, oh, it's snowing outside i don't want to go for a run and in the podcast i was listening he's like oh you don't want to run in the rain yeah yeah yeah. he he says is it raining is it snowing i don't care i'm still going to get at it i'm like you know what he's right that's 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 what i gotta do that's it you need people like that in this world to really drive folks so many people will bash people about you know the the gym selfie Oh, yeah. and, 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 you know, sometimes that can be somebody just trying to show off. But I also think it that can that can serve to motivate you them. for you to get into That's the right. gym. You're like, what am I doing with my yeah. life sitting here sitting on the couch scrolling through Facebook? That's right. Get up there and get at it. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with any of that. Some people do it for their own self-motivation, and that's fine, too. Yeah. You know, whatever. It's I mean, whatever yeah. floats your boat. Whatever works for, whatever works for them. Are, are there any, you know, uh, workout and diet routines that are being pushed on people that, that are just lies? But, you know, like the mainstream media has been pushing them for so many years that people think, thinks that it works, but it just doesn't work. Like one thing that blew my mind was whenever I found out that cardio didn't burn fat. Right. Uh, I was like, what? I've been running for <laughs> blood, all blood, these years and I never knew. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. you can burn some good carbs, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, that blew my mind whenever <clears throat> I right. found that out. It's <sighs> – yes, there are. I don't want to get too <laughs> too yeah, much in the weeds on some of that. There, there, there are – there's a few things that I, me, that I don't find – and and that could be just a personal thing with me. Like I, this whole fasting thing, I know that's a thing. Um, and I I actually tried it just just to see what it did would do for me. Are you talking about the uh, like the intermittent, intermittent fasting? Fasting, yeah, yeah. Um, not a fan of it. Where you're not like eating for sixteen hours yep. or whatever. Not it a is. fan. After about a month, I started getting extremely sick. Mm-hmm. I lost a ton of muscle. Like I dropped fifteen, eighteen pounds of not just body weight, muscle. Wow. Like, I look like I was sick. What, what do you think was the cause of that? <sighs> just not enough food. Well, I can't say it wasn't enough food. I was still getting food in. I, I don't know. It could have been something as simple as, as my – because I know other people who've done it and were, were pretty successful with it. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of this stuff comes down to just the individual. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like keto, the keto diets. The keto diets work great for some people. They don't work great for others. Um, and they only work good for a certain period of time. Yeah. To say it's kind of hard to say that that there's one thing out there that just absolutely doesn't work across the board because you always have those outliers, right? Yeah. You always have those individuals where it actually did work for them. You know, it's yeah. which is ironic, but you know it does it does happen. I've I've seen that. Uh, when it comes to training techniques, I'm one of these guys, honestly, that. If you're in the gym and you're moving weight around and you're training, as long mm-hmm. as you're doing it safely and you're doing it properly, 
uh, that's probably one of my biggest pet peeves. If you want to ask me something that really lights a fire under me and really gets me upset is when I see people, not trainers doing things with people that's unsafe. Yeah. That, that, that lights a fire under me because, you know, they're going to hurt people. You know they're going to get these, and it has happened. I've, I've, you know, I've seen. I've, yeah. Is that how like you, are you talking about like people getting weightlifting injuries and yes. stuff like yes. that? Because yeah, I had a buddy who uh, had to have back surgery. Yeah, because of training. Yeah. Improper form, improper technique gets people hurt all the time. And if you don't know how to do it, you know, there's certain exercises out there. If you don't know how to do them properly, you don't need to be doing them because mm-hmm. the risk reward factor is. Way up here, right? Yeah. You know, going in a gym and doing some bicep curls, the likelihood of getting hurt is not that it's not that likely, right? But when you're squatting, you're mm-hmm. deadlifting, you know, you're doing these complex clinging jerk, you're doing some of these Olympic movements, and you don't know how to do them. Yeah. You're gonna get hurt, and if you're a trainer and you're teaching somebody how to do them and you don't even know how to do them, you're gonna get somebody hurt. Yeah, no doubt about it. Like I said, my buddy had to have yep. back surgery. I mean, people can really get hurt yeah. with this. That's you can. You can get I've seen it. I've seen people well, I know a girl who got her arm broke. Literally got her Ow. arm snapped, huge scar. Mm. You know, I don't want to go into much detail, but yeah. It happens. But it happens. It, you know, like that's why it's really dangerous for people to work out at home by themselves. It is if they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. If you if you are if you're experienced, you've been around the setting, you know how to properly do these exercises. Then I yeah, have at it. Work out at home, great. Yeah, you but, know? but you'll have so many people that just go to Walmart and buy, buy a, a few of, weights, and then they're like, oh, I, they this is hurt. all I need. See, we have a saying. We've uh, I've heard it for years and years and years. Uh, it, it goes throughout the, the gym settings. You're always one injury away from never doing it again. Mm. That's a good saying, and that's very true. You know what I'm saying? You're only one injury away. Um, like, it could be a deadlift and you, you know, blow out a disc. Uh, yeah. you're, or you pull a hamstring completely off your bone. It happens. I've seen it. Uh-huh. Um, you know, all these kind of things could happen. Bench press, tearing your shoulder, tearing your bicep, tore mine. Um you know, there are all these Drunk, things. Man. Yeah, all these things can happen if you don't do the exercise right. Uh, if if you're not warming up the way you should and getting your body loose and ready to ready to handle the load, right? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things people don't do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some people do. There's a lot of people. I, I can't say that. There's there's a lot of people who do it right, but there's also a lot of people who do it wrong. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And they, when they do it wrong, they do it very, very wrong. <laughs> Where do you start with somebody that you, that you're training? Because I know that you're you're a trainer, too. Yeah, yeah. Right? The first thing I do is get them, whatever, whatever body part we're getting ready to hit, we, we do some band exercise to get the muscle, get the joint lubed up, get it ready, get get, get it ready to handle the load, you know? Mm-hmm. Do some stretching just to get the muscle ready the and the joint. People worry a lot about just the muscle itself. Well, the joint is just as important, if not more so, right? Yeah. Because soft, you know, soft tissue damage is one thing. When you start tearing ligaments and tendons and things like that, that's a whole different thing, you know. And if you're not, if you're not warming yourself up and getting everything ready to go, you know what I mean? Before you put some somebody under a load of whatever it may be, bench press, squat, deadlift, whatever it is, if you're not getting them ready to handle the load and they're cold, the joints cold, you're gonna hurt them. Mm. You're gonna hurt them. Yeah. You know, it's it's crazy how complex all that system is as well. So many people just think they have to go into the gym, lift a few weights, and you're going to look like Arnold. Like, this like doesn't we happen. About. It takes years and years and years. So how many years have you been at 30. It? Wow. Yeah, I'm almost 50 years old. I've been over 30. I've been, tr- I've been in the gym since I was 15. That's 14, crazy 15. that you're almost 50, dude. Yeah. You don't look anywhere near it. I, you, know, you know what the gym is? You know what it's called? What? It's the closest thing to the fountain of youth that exists. Oh, a good diet and training to keep you young. Speaking about that, man, on your uh, Facebook page, I seen where this guy uh, tagged you. I, I forget his name, unfortunately, but I think he was fifty-five or something like that, and looking jacked. That's John Swole. Ronnie McKinney. Is that? Oh, that that's him. <laughs> that's him. <Yeah>. Wow, <laughs> that's you know, that that just blew my yeah. mind. And he's Jr. Yeah, I think he is fifty-five. Wow, yeah, that's Jr. 
it, it, it really is a beautiful thing, man. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, if people can get at it at an early age, oh, yeah. then it will do wonders for your life. Yep. But whenever it comes to, uh, to older folks, mm-hmm. there's still hope. Absolutely. I mean, we have to train a little differently as we age. Like, I train different now at my age than I did when I was in my 20s. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to because your body's not going to recover at the same rate. You know, uh, yeah. the likelihood of getting injured at the older you get is there. You you don't heal the same. Yeah. You know, you tear something, you're out for a little while. Just as yeah. you know, we've all been through it. I mean, you know, it's funny. Me and Jamie Kidd was having this discussion last night at the gym, actually. You know, but uh, it's just, you know, age is a is a real thing. Yeah. So, you know, of course you have to train according. You have to train someone or train yourself according to your limitations, whatever they may be. Um, and I'm going to tell you who's great. And I don't mean I should probably ask her if I could throw her name out, too, but Tracy's great with that. Oh, is that the woman you tagged uh, yeah. yesterday? Let me tell you something. Post? She is phenomenal. We are blessed to have her wealth and knowledge. Holy cow. Like, man, she should have been on here instead of me, honestly. She has. We'll, we'll, we'll have her on here. You know what I'm saying? She she can really get in the weeds on a lot of things with you. She's She's great, dude. For real, yeah, I, I'm I'm blessed that this area is getting people like y'all, and well, and I do them. I do think that like it's health is almost becoming popular nowadays. It have is. You seen, it, like, that's these, what I'm saying. It took new, time to get here. Yeah, have you seen these like nutrition shops popping oh, yeah. up all over the place? Yeah, yeah. I've seen them everywhere, yep. and every time I get on Facebook, somebody has one of them loaded teas mm-hmm. or yep. whatever. Yep. So uh, it's 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 getting there yep. to a point. Yep, and I think that. You know what y'all are doing is just going to help that cause, and who knows what the future will be? Who knows, like. man? I mean, who knows? Uh, an- another thing that I wanted to ask you about because um, so many people that I talk to will say this if they're trying to lose weight, they'll say, "Oh, I'm just not going to eat. I ain't going to eat. Worst thing I, I, I ain't going to eat today, and I'll, I'll slim down a little bit that yeah. way. I need to lose a few pounds. I ain't yeah. going to eat." And, and I try to tell them no. that that is not no. the way to do it, but you can explain it much yeah, it better. It basically than destroys I can. your metabolism. I mean, you, you just, you're, it shuts it down. So everything that you eat, when you do eat, it stores it as fat. So to lose weight, guess what you have to do? Exercise. No, you have to eat. Huh. <laughs> yeah. So how but, does that work? Okay, because it boosts your metabolism. Okay, let me explain it to you like this. Okay, let's say we're building a campfire. Okay. Okay, if we have a bunch of, old, wet, crappy wood, and we mm-hmm. keep throwing that on the fire, how's it going to burn? The fire is your metabolism. How's that wood going to burn? It's not going to burn very good, is it? No. That's just like throwing crappy food in your stomach. Okay, we got a fire over here, okay? We've got dry, good, dry, hard wood. We throw that good, dry, hard wood, which is whole foods, on that fire, and the fire is your metabolism. What's the fire going to do? It's going to burn like crazy, Mm. So whenever these people just don't eat, they're not actually losing any weight in the no, process. No. It's just they might be there. losing a little bit of water weight and things like that because their body's just you know in starvation mode. So they're going to flush some water out and things like that. But all they're doing, eventually they have to eat, right? Mm-hmm. Eventually they're going to eat. So when they do eventually eat, the body's going to be like, I'm going to hang on to this because I don't know when I'm going to eat again. So mm. I'm going to hold it as fat. Reserve fat, so I have something to eat. Off. The body's designed to sur- to survive. Mm. It's crazy how like it, it's that smart. Yeah, you know, the, the body. body we're, is a our very body smart is designed. Thing. That's what you can trick it. You can trick it with food and do certain things. Right, you can. But starvation is not how you do that. <laughs> you well, know? What are some of the, like the uh, the health consequences that would come with something? Oh like gosh, that? all kinds of stuff. You know, your kidneys, liver functions, all that stuff. It's terrible. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. Horm- for women, hormonal levels, that's something Tracy could really talk to you about, all the hormonal levels in women that come from different things. But, yeah, I mean, there's just so much. It, it, would it be good to, uh, you know, kind of have a routine? Well, Absolutely. When, whenever you're talking about like how the fo- uh, how the body knows yes. what food is going in it mm-hmm. and recognizes it, you know, how people say like that three time a day routine. Yeah, yeah. every three and a half, every three to three and a half hours, you're going to be putting something in your body. Hmm. Yeah. And, and that's, are you talking like full meals? You don't have or? to put full meals, but you need to be consuming something that's that's a good whole food, rich in protein and carbs, clean carbs. Okay. Unless you're trying to get yourself on a carb, on a, on a carbohydrate deficit, so you're trying to lose a bit of body fat, then you want to cut the carbs down or take them out of a couple of meals. You don't take them out of 
every single meal, of course, but mm-hmm. you're going to take, you know, carbs out of meals, pull the carbs out, low, or lower the carb rate for individual meals, so you you slowly, your body starts to transform. Yeah. You know, it's a process. You know, the thing is, too, the biggest thing I see is people want instant gratification, right? We live in a society where everybody wants it right now. They don't want to yeah. wait. They don't want to work for it. They want it right now. That's just the society that we live in, unfortunately. But the thing is, is this is just not, this is one of those things just not that way. And that's why most people don't stick with the gym is because they're in a month or two months and they don't see that much of a change. They see a little change, but not that much. So they they lose focus or they just, they doubt it. But if they if they would stay the course for one year and then look back, yeah, they'd be like, "Oh crap! I'm glad I, I gave it this year." Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you're not going to see a whole lot in a month or two, but every day is a little bit more and more and more and more and more. And those little changes over a long period of time add mm-hmm. up to big changes. Yeah, and and also it just gives you this sense of accomplishment it as does. well. Even if you're not seeing results right away, mm-hmm. that sense of accomplishment is what has really gotten me into and it. And the serotonin, yeah, the happy hormone, man, is another thing. You know, you get you get addicted to that too. I mean that that's probably one of the things with me, honestly, is I love that that rush, yeah, that serotonin high. I crave it, you know, and yeah. I just crave it. Yeah, it's you know well one person that I love following is Mark Wahlberg. Yep, he's he's created this. I forget what it is like the three thirty or four thirty in the morning yeah. club. And the one thing that really uh, grabbed my attention, what he said was, he said by the time somebody hits their alarm clock, I've already done, done more, more than they will that day. See, that's the same we have in the army. I've done more by five thirty than most people do all day. I love that man. <laughs> you know that what I that mean? is, oh, I, 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 mean, st- I don't want to get up that early. Yeah. But but I love that Mentality, mindset. Yeah. And, and I and people can get that mindset with just going out and doing any Anything. workout because yeah. there's somebody out there that you are doing more than. That's right. And if that's one of those things that drive you. Then trust me, that can drive you quite a long ways. People yeah. has you know whatever reason that they want to get into. Everyone has. Everyone has their reasons. Everyone, well, not and not just fitness. Everyone has you have a reason why you're doing this. There's a reason for that. You have something something pushed you to do this. No, yeah. and we can apply that to anything in our lives. Anything. It, I, like we were saying earlier too, it just helps so much with mental health. Yes, and, and with the times that we are living in nowadays, man, it's crazy. Yeah, I, <laughs> I've I haven't I've never heard so much talk about anxiety yep. than I have here in the last two or three the years. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. But if people would just get out of their house every once in a while, there's plenty of beautiful walking trails around here uh, that you can walk or run yeah, or whatever well, I, you want to. I got, a, I, got a, I got a good friend of mine, Jerry Baker. He, I, he probably won't watch the I don't know. He might. But he's got a saying, get out and live. He always says it. He always posts yeah. it on his Facebook. Hashtag, get out and live. And, I, and there's and listen, I mean that's a that that's a real thing, right? Yeah, it is. I, I, mean, I tell I tell people explore and exist. That, there you go. That's another one. That's I, that's I, great. That's that's my little motto. Yeah, and it's whatever that pushes you to get out and you know get out and get out and do something. You know, yeah. you don't have to necessarily go to the gym. You you don't. I mean, there's other ways you can get out here and in a kayak and go up and down the Big Sandy River if that's what you like. Yeah. We're, we're blessed to live in one of the most beautiful places on the planet that has Lots of natural so resources. many a- a- outdoor athletic yeah. activities. Yeah. Whenever it comes to your uh, time in the Army, what, what was your uh, position in there, you said? I was a platoon sergeant. I retired as a platoon sergeant. But, you know, I, I was an IED detective. What I did is I looked for bombs, man. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I was one of those guys. Dang. <laughs> I was dude. an IED hunter. Whoa, yeah. What was that like? It was a blast, man. <laughs> uh, and obviously, I was pretty good at my job. I still got all my yeah. fingers and toes. But uh, wow. what yeah, man, made it was, you go that route? That's uh, dude. That's, well, I didn't start that. Route. I started. I actually, when I first went in, I was actually a reconnaissance guy. So, do, do they tell scout. you like what you're going to be doing, no, or, or do you sign up for a I job like for that. that? I signed up for that. What made you sign up for it? Sound fun, man. Dude, that is crazy. Yeah, how, how many uh, bombs do you think you oh, did? Oh, God. A couple hundred. Wow. Yeah. What was the first one like? What was your mindset like? Do you remember? 
No, honestly, I don't. I remember the first time I actually got blown up by one, though. What's that like? That sucked. <laughs> How well does that arm? Because I oh, what works, was that man. one? Oh yeah, the, what was the one well. movie Hurt Locker? Yeah, yeah. I watched that movie. Yeah. That was wild. Does, it, it does, hurts. How well does that work? It, it hurts. Yeah, it hurts. It works. The equipment works. The equipment will save you, no doubt about it. The equipment will save you. I mean, we have the best equipment at that time when I was over there. My last my, my last deployment, we had the best equipment on the planet, man. I mean, if we didn't, I would honestly I wouldn't be here. I got blown up like three times. Wow. Yeah. That's On my last crazy. deployment, I got hit like three times. So, you know, when I had soldiers, mine, they got hit more than that even. Like one of my guys got hit five times. Dang, man. Yeah. And, so, and he's good? Yeah, as good as good can be. <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> you know, but yeah, he's doing fine. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it was. It, here's the thing, though, man. It was our job. So you don't think about it. You know, it's just like coming here. You, I know you may not, it's hard probably for you to grasp that but really it's our job we get up and that's what we do it's not we don't look at it like you might look at it you may look at it like man they're, this is kind of crazy but we didn't we don't look at it like that we look at it as that's my job i gotta go ahead and find these moms and stuff so they don't kill my brothers and sisters and and fellow coalition soldiers so that's what you do you get up you put your body armor on you get in your vehicles and you go find some bombs how do you know where the bombs are? Is you just it get intel lucky. or you just get no, lucky? No, a lot of times you just get lucky, man. You either hit wow. it yourself and you blow one of your vehicles up, or you find it and you dig it up and you blow it up. Wow. It's that simple. Was a vehicle, were you ever in a vehicle situation? Oh, yeah, I've been blown up three times in a vehicle. Dang. <laughs> yeah. That, well, That's actually what, how this happened. Which part? There? My bicep and shoulder. I've had bicep shoulder because dislocated my shoulder, broke my arm, everything. Wow, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, people will watch a movie like Hurt Locker, like myself, and you know that's that's a lot of this. It's Hollywood, man. It's it's not really. There's a lot of stuff I've watched a little bit. I haven't watched the whole movie. I just I'm not. I don't watch that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I've watched a little bit of it just because I've had people tell me you need to watch it. Da, 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 da. And some of the stuff I've seen, it's it's, it's Hollywood. It's, uh, that's not re- the reality over there. Yeah. It's not really what. It, it's not how it is. My dad's the same way with military yeah. movies. He don't watch. It yeah, like yeah, they're getting everything wrong. Yeah, they, and they do. They do. It's Hollywood. You know, they're just trying to sell movies, man. That's it. So, so like movies. it's a relatively, you know, safe job. Yeah, be, I mean, it's, it's as safe as it can be. I mean, it is, it is a very dangerous job. But they, we have safety measures that we can use to make it as safe as we can. How, how do you? What's the training like it's for intense. something like that? It's intense, man. Do you, like like how you know a, a police officer will get shot or get tased during yeah. their training? Is there no, a we, part we where you no, have to? We, no, there's nothing like no mock IED. Well, there's mock IED explosions when you're going through different types of lanes, trainings, and things like that. But it's not to that. You can't really anybody that's ever been tell you this. Train ups are train ups, right? Mm-hmm. They're trying to get you ready, but there's no, there's nothing that they can do to really simulate what real combat's like. Yeah, they just can't. I mean, because it's it is what it is. I mean, there's no simulating that. I mean, they can't. You can't get that close because you can't get those raw emotions and stuff that actually happens in live combat. You can't. No matter what you do, you can't create that or recreate that. That those are emotions that happen in that time because of the chaos that's going on at that time. Wow. You can't re- you there's nothing you can do to to prepare anyone for that. That's just each individual soldier has to experience that, process that and deal with that how he does how, whatever way he does. How did you keep a level head whenever you were in a combat zone? Um did you just kind of just, I just the, fo- the focus yeah, I was, was just that? focused, man. I actually um anybody that, that's ever been over there with me that you probably you know, you may talk to will tell you that I was calm. I was relaxed. In that environment, you have to be. Yeah, because if you don't, that's you, people die because I'm gonna tell you what gets a lot, of, a lot of guys killed is the lack of making a decision because people freeze up and they can't make a decision. Hmm. So if you don't, people will die. I used to tell, I used to go around and talk to like future officers. When I taught OTC after I got back. Uh, I go talk to future officers and stuff like that, and they'd be like, you know, that's one of the questions. Well, you know, what's one of your biggest takeaways? Said, make a decision, good, bad, or whatever doesn't matter. You have to make a decision, and whatever decision you make, you live with it, the consequences of it. Wow. Because the the not making a decision will cost more lives than making a decision. Even if it's the wrong decision to make, nine times out of ten, the wrong decision is better than no decision. 
It's true, man. I, you got to keep going. You have to, you know. Um, but that's, you know, that's just the reality of that. That's that's the reality of boots on the ground and combat. You know, mm. it's not pretty. It's just not. There's nothing about it. Hollywood fantasizes it and makes it look all, you know, glorious. Yeah. Or what, but they're it's ugly. It's an ugly business. Yeah. You know. You know, so so many uh, got young guys. Think uh, we'll play Call of Duty or something oh, like yeah. that nowadays, and <laughs> yeah. they think that they know exactly what yeah. it's like, and they want to get in there. And I can't tell you how many yeah. of uh, these guys that I knew joined the military, and now they're back home working yeah. at Tractor Supply. Yeah, or, they're or like, something it's not like, like Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, it's. I, I don't know exactly how you can uh, get that point across to folks, though. Besides having conversations like this and really telling people, like, "Hey, this is real. Well, it's not Call of Duty. It's yeah, not Hollywood." You don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah. You don't, you know, um, and you never know. Here's the thing, too. You never know what you're going to do in any environment. It don't have to be that. It can be any environment. It could be right out here, somebody getting a car accident in front of you. You don't know how you're going to – you may think you're going to pull them out, and you may – and then again, you may sit in your vehicle and do nothing, right? Because you don't know what you're going to do until you're in that situation. You can say whatever you want to say, but until you're placed in that situation – you're really not going to know how you're going to react. It's very true, man. Well, dude, thank you for your service. Yeah. We need we need people like you in this world to keep this country as great as it is and I'm was, keeping folks safe. Well, I mean, both my sons are in. Oh, well, where are they stationed at? Uh, my oldest son's in Fort Dix, McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey. We just came back from there. We got caught in the, in the uh, blizzard up I there. I've seen that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Foot of snow on the yeah, ground. Yeah, it's crazy. Lucky y'all. I think it was like 17 inches the time we left, but... And my youngest son is actually in training in the Air Force right now. He just finished up boot camp, and he's in his advanced individual training now. So, so were they going to the Army? Air Force, both of them. I told him to go to the Air Force. Daddy, well, why the Air Force? Because it's just a lot better branch of service. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, I understand. You know, I, I didn't want him doing what Dad did, plain yeah. and simple. Yeah, my, my, well, my dad, he was Army <laughs> yep. as well. And, he uh, probably told I, you to I, I, was, I was thinking about joining whenever I was in the uh, – when I was in high school. Yeah. And he actually told me the same thing. That's kind of weird, Air Force. He <laughs> yeah. told me Air Force, too. <laughs> yeah, of course. But nobody tells you Navy for some reason. <laughs> yeah, well, your dad, <laughs> I'm sure he's a Vietnam vet. He knows. He, he's, he's seen it, too. So he's like, you know, if my son's going to go, he's going to go this route. Yeah. He's not going to do what dad did. You know. But but we need a lot of people to – well, we need people like that in this yeah, world, though. Yeah, we and do. I, yeah, we do. We do need people like that. You know? And I'm thankful that there are yeah, people absolutely. like you, man. We're blessed, man. We're blessed. This country's a great country. I mean, it. you know. It yeah, is. I know it has its flaws, but, man. Every like, country does. If people would do their research on t- into how other countries are doing, how yeah. other parts of oh, the world yeah. are, we are blessed, my yeah. friend. And the thing is, too, you can do all the research in the world – and you're still not going to prove to them, but you drop them off in some of these countries. Yep. And within 24 hours, they'll be like, hey, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> yeah. USA, all yeah. right. <laughs> Sometimes it just takes a little dose of actual real- in-your-face reality before they realize, too, unfortunately. It's just an unfortunate thing, but it is what it is, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. I'm not mad at them. But just Jacob, don't know. thank you for your time today, appreciate brother. appreciate you, brother. This was a great conversation. I hope folks can learn something from this. And for the folks that want to uh, check out East Kentucky Barbell, the supplement shop, and everything that you got going on, Absolutely. where do they go to do that? We're at uh, 160 Con Street, Ival, Kentucky. Um, uh, phone number is 478-3200. Jacob. Swing by. Thank you, brother. I hey, appreciate you, man. Thanks.